Well, the funny thing was, is I wanted to do the cold open about your Facebook recruitment, but you <laughs> didn't even let me, I said, show content, show content. And what was your reply? No, no, no. Something like that. Yes. Well, you know, it was funny because no shit in the last probably 48 hours. And I can't remember when I said, you know, what? I, I don't get recruited by the, the big companies, Google, Microsoft, Facebook. And I immediately go to, well, because I'm over the hill at this point. I imagine those companies want to get fresh young people who aren't married, who don't have children, who don't have... They don't know that from your LinkedIn profile. Sure, you can. Are you kidding me? You cannot. You tell me the guy who graduated college in the 90s is not X number of years old by now. Well, okay, but you don't know the other things about me. I could still be the, you know, stereotypical introverted sitting at home not talking to people and just banging cool shit out not when you're in your 40s man oh god you're breaking my heart (laughs) well i mean okay so 20 year old programmer kevin shoot was i even a programmer yeah i guess so but not professional i was an unprofessional one I, i was not a paid programmer at any time during my in my 20s we call that an amateur show fact I, I got my first paid programming job when I was 32. And that's crazy, <laughs> to be perfectly honest. Um, but 32-year-old Kevin, is married with children. And I adopted the idea that, that I, I need a life. So, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to burn the candle at both ends. And so what does Kevin do? Kevin burns the candles at both ends. And, you know, that's, you know. No, just, that's what you just do when you're a family person. That's got nothing to do with your job. Yeah, but so anyway, so back to Facebook. So, so could you engage that person still? Like, do you think Lee is gonna, you know, could you engage in a dialogue? Do you think Lee is even a real person? So, so Lee for the lay person here is the recruiter, first party recruiter that reached out to me from Facebook. How do you know that they're a first party recruiter? Um, if if you were to trust what uh, LinkedIn says, right? Okay, so. so it is an indicator. So when you're done telling your story, I'll have some major confessions here, but go ahead. Well, so... My point is, is I feel like none of those big companies ever recruit me. You know, I'll get the occasional Amazon one. I think I got a Netflix one. The Netflix one was probably like the nicest, like out of the blue one you get. I mean, it's nice to have Facebook be like, yeah, but I, and I shared the message I sent back. I politely said, you know, I, I just recently left Facebook and I think it would be misleading if I were to, to ever want to work for you. And by the way, I have, love my teammates and I don't want to go anywhere. So let's preface that. Um, but um, <laughs> if they ever listen to this freaking podcast, I think you made the comment <laughs> like I would be fired. Within, like, right. No, minutes. if they through the hiring <laughs> process, they would find this and you would get let go either after you were hired or you'd get bounced out of the process because we've definitely shared some Facebook hate. Well, I just don't think I could work for one of the big ones with the exception of maybe Microsoft. And this isn't like some like, you know, like dog whistle for Microsoft to call me or something. (laughs) So um, I just I just look at the Silicon Valley life and go, there's just no way, man. I have I have like a life that the product is great. We'll do our best job nine to five Monday through Friday. And if if you know, push comes to shove and the world falls apart on Saturday. Okay. But let's not plan to work on Saturday. All right. That's just, let's not plan to work Saturday. guys. Let's, let's do better Monday through Friday. So I just envision working for like a Google or Facebook is just like the seven day a week. Yeah. But you got stock options in the back of your mind. That's what you're supposed to be telling yourself to keep, you know, your sanity and missing your children's soccer games and stuff like that. So that's what's in my mind. True or not, I don't know. I'll never I was going to say, so do you think nobody there has a set five-day week? I have no idea. I okay. mean, do you know anyone who works in the Valley? No. no. <laughs> oh, <and laughs> you ever notice on people's Twitter profiles, and I've noticed this like yesterday, I'm so-and-so and I work at such-and-such, formerly Twitter or formerly Google. You know, like they like drop this name, like 
big, you know, I used to work at this big company, but formerly, obviously you didn't like it or you'd still be there. But I just find it funny that you didn't like it. You don't work there, but you make sure you put it in your profile. So people have some sort of credence, I guess, in what you do. Anyway. So even if you just stop by for a cup of coffee, you should like put that in your profile for the street cred. Is that like formally I mean, had coffee say, at Twitter headquarters? <laughs> well, when I say cup of coffee, that's kind of in the pro sports ah. reference as a, you know, journeyman going through the league kind of had a cup of coffee at various teams. Gotcha. And- NFL, not for long. I get it. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. All right. Well, so, all right, Bob, it's your turn. Well, nope. My confession was well it's not really a confession it's uh it adds to my uh i don't know come sometimes malaise i guess would be a good word i look through my twitter feed and a lot of these people are my friends you know that i list like read a lot of stuff just kind of floats by but you know i see a lot of my peers my friends talking about you know recruiter this you know they're so you know they don't even read my profile but i'm getting hit up by all these recruiters I don't get hit by any recruiters. So you're talking about like the blue chip, you know, Silicon Valley's. I don't get anything. Cue the sad trombone music. Well, I wouldn't feel bad. I mean, it's not like I'm like turning down. This is like out of the blue. Like, oh, look at this Facebook. And I even chuckled when I got it. I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. What am I going to tell these people? But you probably get flooded with recruitment requests, right? I, I get the... I get two flavors. I get the, you matched a search result and I get the auto responder a lot. And then I also get the local recruiters who um, don't have a job for me, but want to establish the relationship. Right. (laughs) It's like, (laughs) I want to sell you Kevin and make money off you but I can't yet. So when the opportunity comes up, I want to make sure you're, you're, right. you're can reachable. I get you in my bullpen? Exactly. So those are the two flavors of recruiters. I usually get, I ignore the, I, you can just smell whether or not you're, you know, it's like you have PHP eight years ago in your, in your profile and that's what they're hiring for. And they're impressed with your profile. <laughs> really? You're impressed with my profile. And I haven't touched it in eight years. That's, I'm, a, I'm as amazed as you are that you're amazed <laughs> you know, at that. And then um, the local recruiters are, are pretty nice, you know, to be fair, but we, you'll have like recruiter eight, or eight, I don't even know what they call these things. Are they headhunter agencies? Wherever these recruiters hang out, um, <laughs> it's like they work under the same umbrella and they don't realize that three people from the same agency are all trying to establish the same relationship. I wonder if that's because they're all really independent contractors, even though they work under the same umbrella. Probably. They're all in their pajamas. Right. They get a commission based on the head. Not really. They don't know what the guy in the other cubicles is doing and probably doing the same thing. And so I've taken one job from a recruiter and I regret it. I only lasted at that job five months. Wow. Yes. Because I, I don't blame, I don't fault the recruiter. And it's, this is a, a correlation, not a causation here. But the only time I've ever taken a recruiter and like said, all right, let's do this. I've regretted it and it is what it is. So it could work out the next time. I hope there isn't a next time we're doing some really cool stuff where I'm at really can't get into it, but um, full disclosure, I wouldn't want to work at a Facebook where you're a cog in the machine. You know, I want to work at Facebook and this isn't like because I'm a uh, Zuckerberg fanboy, which I'm clearly not. But (laughs) if I can't talk to the decision makers, I mean, the real people who are going to move the needle. I'm just not interested in working for your company. I want to make an impact. Well, I must have. I must have checked a box somewhere along the way in my LinkedIn profile. Maybe that's why I don't get any of those recruitment things. Well, you do. Oh, that's that's fair. Uh, I think I'm offline. So I know there's several websites. Gosh, you know, back in the day it was monster.com and career builder. And who knows what they are? Because I really don't use them now. I think Indeed. Indeed. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah. I think Indeed is, I used that around, I don't know, three years ago when I was, I was looking around. Um, 
but yeah, they have all those preferences. And then of course I like how LinkedIn, or I don't like how LinkedIn does it, but I, I, I giggle because they have like these options where, Hey, if you tell us you're looking for a job, we'll hide this fact from your current employer. I'm just like, gosh, LinkedIn, you know, you're all about voyeurism, you know, and like these secrets and like, I just feel like, you know, like I'm going to get blackmailed by LinkedIn at any moment. But anyway. The real developers of LinkedIn.com. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, LinkedIn, it's like such a good idea, but such a piss poor execution. You are listening to The Bob and Kevin Show with Bob Beatty Bar and Kevin Gisheski. Each week, we cover relevant tech and social issues related to technology. And more weeks than not, we're joined by special guests to add additional perspective to our topics. Our website is bobandkevin.show. And our episodes can be found on virtually any podcast network. Be sure to follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Just search for Bob and Kevin Show. Hey, Bob, what are we doing today? Well, Kevin, I can't believe that we haven't covered this on the show before, but I think today we're going to talk about what it's like to work from home since we were just talking about being recruited and all that crap. Uh, And we've chosen a a career path that's very specific to us, and I think we're going to chat about it a little bit and the rest of the other crap that we usually do with meandering and bashing of large conglomerate digital properties. I'm Bob Betty Barr from the Bob and Kevin Show, and my co-host, as per usual, is me, who never answers with his name, or when I say say hello, he says hello. So, bring us into this topic of working from <laughs> home. I'm sorry, I I, uh, I kind of go out of my way to be a difficult co-host, Bob, because I I just know how it gets you going, gets your juices flowing. You just want to grind my them. gears. Exactly. You know what does grind my gears? I have an iPad and I love to draw with uh, Sketches Pro. And the iPad's about the only Apple product that I'm really into right now. I don't have an iPhone, but that's another topic. But you know what? Either I A, don't know, or B, they make it really hard, or maybe C, both. Um, I don't want to use iCloud to back up the crap that's on my iPad. So I've got, you know, pictures, I've got drawings. And I feel like Apple's holding hostage my data because if I don't want to play in iCloud, you know, I want to connect to Amazon Cloud Drive or or what have you. And I was Googling around and damn it. Is this just exclusive to Sketches Pro? Because I know that no. you can use Dropbox. You can use, you can even use uh, OneDrive on an iDevice. So I'll, I'll take this one as a user error but they sure as hell don't make it easy for you to to figure it out. Not that they should, but comes back to if you're going to make me work in your ecosystem for the love of God, don't don't make me I don't know. Well, Just make it- I think you can go to settings in general and disable iCloud and then if you yep. have mobile app on said device and just tell said device to back up or the the app for Dropbox, OneDrive, Amazon, whatever. If you just tell it where the location is that you want to back up on your iPad, I, I think it just does it. So I'm efforting that. In fact, before we went on the, the air here, even though we are recorded, um, that's what I was working on um, because I've, I've been doing a lot of drawings. I don't know if you saw my latest. Yeah, was that inspired by the the topic of the cold open? Like, did you just jack that out this afternoon? Uh, Yeah, so I usually get a drawing done like from start to finish in a day because I I usually don't like to linger on one drawing because I say, well, whatever I can get done in a day, that's it. And let's ship it. And once I ship it, it's good. So for the lay listener, I'm doing like a uh, tech slash Silicon Valley Monopoly board. And I was just trying to come up with some witty things on there. Instead of uh, uh, Monopoly money, it's everything's in Bitcoin prices. Uh, Instead of paying the... uh, Oh, that's brilliant. The tax thing, it's like the third rectangle. Uh, you have a data breach, pay 200 Bitcoin. Um, <laughs> uh, instead of taking a ride on the, the Reading Railroad, you can take a ride on Tesla, Uber, Lyft, and you know, et cetera. So, nice. Um, starting to come up with different ones there. 
I'm having trouble with community chess because I kind of want to switch that out with, you know, something techy. Um, my my boardwalk replacement. I picked Apple just because they were the first to a trillion. Then I well, put Amazon as Park Place. Community chess would be like Patreon, wouldn't it? Ooh, I like it. See, see, oh, this is good stuff. Collab. It's a collab. Yep. Live collab. <clears throat> Live recorded. Um, All right. So, so. I'm going to inject here something that I usually inject like at minute 50. And I'm going to say that the uh, thoughts and opinions of Bob and Kevin on the Bob and Kevin show are exclusively the thoughts and opinions of Bob and Kevin and not their employers. Because we're going to talk a little bit about working from home. I'm going to try to bring us back to the topic. And uh, so you and I both work from home. Or work remote, I guess, but I work from home. You're back working from home, yes? Yes. So I had been working at the Chamber of Commerce for a while, trying it out, and turns out I learned that I, I just hate even doing that. I, 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 I'm a creature of habit, and I like to work in the place where I habitate. It was the shoe thing, right? Because we talked about this online on Twitter this morning a little bit. It's because you don't like wearing shoes anymore, right? And that's such a weird thing, is it not? I mean, because you, you go to a regular job, you're like, you know, you're either dressed up, dressed casually, but you always got shoes on in all those situations. And you're right. It's weird to code with shoes on anymore. I don't, I only wear shoes when I leave the house. In Like I work out barefoot. I work barefoot. Uh, you name it, I'm barefoot. So I ran a Twitter poll a few weeks back about wearing shoes in the home. I'm totally, I think it's so disgusting when somebody like walks in your house and doesn't take their shoes off. I and just don't understand why people don't. It's just like, so what were the poll results though? Um, it was, it was mostly what I thought that about 40% were like, yeah, it's disgusting. But it was about 30% was like, eh, it doesn't really bother me. And 30% that says <clears throat> it doesn't bother me. So for me, if you ever want to wonder why I come to this conclusion, I offer Exhibit A, which is an airport restroom, um, urinal, or any public restroom for that matter. Those are the same shoes that people are wearing in your house. That's disgusting. Yeah, but in the same regard, though, and this is going to get really dicey here, um, I would argue that if you're in a house where you're raising small animals also known as children <laughs> and you're not wearing shoes in your own house it's kind of like walking barefoot in an airport restroom <laughs> i don't know i mean my my kids are pretty clean of course you know everyone's gonna say well my kids are the best and whatever whatever but yeah i'm, I'm gonna say but that. have your kids always been clean and have your boy children always had impeccable aim um oh absolutely not impeccable aim. <laughs> Oh, I'm 40 and I'm sometimes I'm like, how the hell did it go? What is a, what, what? No, I, I wasn't even looking that way. Right. You know, it's like, what is going on here? So no, um, but they're all trained to, you better clean up after yourself. Yeah. And I've seen how well children clean up after themselves. Just yeah. saying, just throwing that out there. My, my boys are 10 and 17, so they're old enough to, uh, I can threaten them with taking away things, and they, they totally get that. They're like, oh, whoa, 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 we're good, we're good. Like Inspection. their ability to breathe. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, oh, wow. Okay, so coding with shoes, uh, that was the thing we identified today is like, wow, that, you know, and both of us, I think, agree on that. It's like, oh, it's kind of weird to code with shoes on. And you're definitely self-described as more hipster dirty than hippie. me. I'm okay. a dirty hippie. Your Self words, not mine. Dirty hippie, not Kevin. And, and I'm more the uptight, I wear a button-down shirt even when I code from home, usually. That just blows my mind. I like, I'm dressed for speed and comfort, man. Well, I, I I have a lot of client interactions, like video client interactions. And if I have my Slayer t-shirt on with all my tattoos showing, I just feel it has a different vibe than if I at least cover up. And, you know, from the waist up, I look like, like, I, like I'm at least coffee shop worthy. Well, you know? all right. So then here's a really good question, though, because we're doing video right now while we're doing this podcast. And you've got that low keyboard camera. God, is that I the camera that you use for 
your yes. video conferences with clients. So right then you now crouch down. Do, or are they, um, or are they have, staring at your neck the whole time? Sometimes. <laughs> and your well, fingers, the tops of your fingers and your neck. Um, it depends. So I'll have to check myself out and make sure I'm framed. But yeah, uh, side note, Dell XPS, what the hell were you guys thinking? Because you put the camera down here where the keyboard meets the screen and it has this like, it looks like I'm, I have giant spiders in my home when I'm typing and like video chatting. Yeah, it's weird. Well, I know why they did it. Why? Tinfoil, tinfoil hat time, everyone. So they did it because they've run algorithms to know they can watch your fingers and they'll know your keystrokes. And it's like a key logger. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Um, okay. Oh, total tangent here. This is my fault. No, for... we never do tangents. <laughs> Bob, do you know who Johnny Appleseed was? Well, obviously I didn't know him personally because I'm not quite that old. But if I'm not mistaken, was Johnny Appleseed from Indiana? Yeah, Fort Wayne, Indiana. To and be he like precise. threw some seeds around or something, right? Yeah, I can't tell if it's like local folklore only or if this is like national or... No, I world. think Johnny Appleseed is global. Okay, because my kids celebrate at school Johnny Appleseed's birthday and I believe it was either yesterday or today. And I was just like, you know, is that like a us thing or what? And the reason I bring this up is Johnny Appleseed used to wear a a pot for a hat. Yes, like a, I remember like the book. Saucepan, right? And I grew and, up in Ohio for the record, so I remember this from growing up in Ohio. And we have a local baseball team that's totally Johnny Appleseed themed. So the mascot's name is Johnny. He wears a, like a plush, you know, fake tin uh, saucepan. Oh. And then the team is called the Tin Caps because of that. Oh, I wonder where that came from. So when I originally heard they were going to change the name of the baseball team from the Wizards to the Tin Caps, I'm like, you got to be effing kidding me. But now it actually is growing on me. And I'm like, it's pretty good. To wit, we need to name our listeners, all three of them, like, you know, like as a, as a plural. So if, we, if they wear tinfoil hats, should we call them Tin Caps or Tin Cappers? I don't know. Is is that stealing from Johnny Appleseed folklore or? That's all right. I'm waiting for the cease and cease and desist before I, I, I believe any of the copyrights have been infringed. All right. So for right now, they're tin cappers. I don't know. Just think about it. Hey listeners, actually, now that we're talking about this, uh, we had mentioned on an episode, I think it might've been the last episode or the episode before that, like 48 minutes in, we said something about, and if you're listening, give us a shout on Twitter. We've actually gotten some shouts on Twitter uh, of people who made it to the 48 minute mark. And somebody today said they made it to the 55 minute mark when they actually tweeted us. So, so I guess those listeners should chime in and let us know if tin cappers or uh, what should the Bob and Kevin loyal listeners be referred to as so cute, short, you know, like rock stars do. So, Bob, we uh, we took our advertising revenue, which... Um, oh, we're finally going to talk about these? <laughs> which, <laughs> which was zero. Then we supplemented it with our own funds. So, <clears throat> we have uh, the official Bob and Kevin Show stickers available, but we don't know how to best distribute them. So, I guess the best way would be to get them from directly from Kevin or Bob. And right now, if you come try to get one for me i'm gonna say well bob's got them not me so we i have to get my my stash but if should we do like some like total radio ripoff contest like the secret password is and yes. then we say the password yes and so you tweet the you well should they tweet it at us or dm Ooh. us Ooh. so let's make Slide it so somebody's the gotta DMs. like follow us on our social media whether it's instagram or twitter i don't know if, both what do you think uh, just one is fine. I like Twitter the best. Not All right. Lie. So if somebody sends us a DM, so that means you got to follow us. Bob and, and Kevin show. And we need a secret password, Bob. The secret password is sticker. And the spelling counts, right? I mean, I guess. sticker. Yeah. If you fuck up the spelling of sticker, <laughs> you're not getting a sticker. So yes. So 
we have no idea how to get it to you. We might like have to buy stamps and like envelopes and, and shit like that. But we will we will create a a digital DM relationship with you. Ooh. And we should definitely say address. while supplies last because yeah. we're not sending thousands of stickers out. And I don't know what the supply is right now. We we like, we could send hundreds out for sure. Ooh, oh so. no 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 no! I don't. <laughs> I ain't got time for that. <laughs> so maybe maybe we'll send a Kevin. few. Kevin, we'll I think we're, I think we're safe. Okay, I think we're safe. All right, I just make sure we're not <laughs> victims of our own success. <laughs> that would be great. I would buy extra stickers if we ran out due to this massive Twitter DM secret word sticker. All right, so to recap, follow us on Twitter. Send us a DM with the word sticker, and it's only good for maybe until the next episode, right? Because we'll probably have a different password at that point. Right? Sure, because you know so, we're all about changing our passwords here at Bob McCann. Exactly, exactly. So next week the password is is Q five percent H seven capital L. <laughs> Troy, Troy, if you're listening, we will do more strong passwords after today. Yes, um, I'm sure so, sticker has been pwned. So if you send us a, a password and it's now expired, we're just gonna have to send you to the next episode, right? Can I do, yes. Can I do a blatant self-promotion as well sure. related to the stickers? So I will, uh, going to be hosting a panel at an upcoming event in Chicago for Morocco, the U.S. Festival. And uh, I'm representing the Bob and Kevin show because Kevin decided not to come. Um, and I will also have some stickers with me, not hundreds, but I will have some stickers with me. And if you come up to me and tell me the password, we'll have I'll give one. You a sticker dozen stickers <laughs> that's right all right so all right wow. so back, what were we talking about uh so this is usually where we hit the return statement in code and it goes back to whatever it was we were doing so so this that method return, has returned that would return our garbage back to us that we just talked about we have now cleared this from our call stack and now we are talking about working from home. So, well, uh, that's actually a great segue because you actually dropped some code knowledge on Twitter this morning about working from home and your morning routine, or was it the entire day routine? Uh, well, it's mainly, or mainly my morning routine. I mean, if I get up and I'm like bedroom fresh and it's time to work, I will okay. just be off. Wait, what the hell does bedroom fresh mean? Oh, you mean bedroom stanky. Yeah, it's the opposite of fresh. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, the, you know, I can't, I got to wake up. I got to eat breakfast. I got to get the kids, you know, do my part for the kids in the morning. I, I take my kids, I drive them to school in the morning. This is pre-shower? This is, this is well, it depends. Some, some days I'll be like, uh, let's do the shower after. Let's do this, you know. So that's variable. But by time... I get into the captain's chair and ready to code. I have to have a coffee and I have to be showered. I have to be fully dressed. My hair has to have moose boogers all in the front. So it's all good to go. No shit. You put product in your hair before you oh, work from home? Yeah. Oh my God. You're such a pretty boy. Yes. Um, <laughs> you know, I'm just going to accept it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I love you for it. <laughs> so, um, so that's my morning routine. And I, in my, when I am not normally in a transient uh, living situation, I usually play some sort of video game to get my my acuity going. So, what is your what is your lag time from wake up to productivity? My lag time from wake up to productivity. Work I, productivity, sorry. Oh, you mean from when I start working to when I feel unproductive or from when I wake up in the no, morning to what I'm doing? Something? Yes, from when you wake up until you get into the captain's chair. I'm doing the air quotes sign. Um, actually, it's, I think I can give you an actual number, two and a half hours. Because so 2.5 hours from wake up to do your kid responsibilities shower coffee play a video game put yep. moose in your hair <laughs> yep so i would i would say somewhere between 8 30 and 9 eastern i am effective now some days i'll the early bird will will get going because if, if i'm like super excited about a problem 
you know, because if I end the previous day and I'm like, damn it, I can't figure that out. It'll bother me for the next several hours after work. And then I'm like, oh, yeah, I got an idea. It may not work, but I got an idea. And I might start working quicker, but I'll still go through my routine. Just might do it faster. You expedite the routine. Exactly. So, oh, my gosh, this is. What about you? Well, all right. Wait, wait I got I gotta go back to the moose. Thing. So do you still use? <laughs> so do you still use moose? It's not you, moose. Okay, okay. Are we really gonna get into my hygiene? Well, I, moose just threw up a red flag for me. It kind of so. So I like, was in the military. Um, prior to the military, like, <laughs> like late nineties, early two thousands, I was totally a gel guy. No more. Now do you do gel. Now I'm a pomade guy. Pomade. Okay, so that's kind of hipster. Right. So yes. so it's not moose, it's pomade. Okay. Oh, no. Mo- I, I don't even know if... Do men even use moose? I mean, isn't it for like volumizing women's hair? Isn't that we what We used to use is? moose in the 80s. At least this guy did. Maybe, maybe it was not good for hair retention, Bob. <laughs> oh, burn. Sick burn. Damn. Walked right into that one. All right, that was that was fair play, fair play. So my morning routine. <laughs> let's talk about the lag from wake up to productivity. Okay. So I'm a little bit surprised to all of our regular listeners. Uh, my thing is a little different than Kevin's. Shocker. Um, I wake up at six twenty five a.m. Central Time, and I am logged in and producing by about six forty a.m. Wow. So I take my massive, you know, 18 step commute from my bedroom upstairs down the stairs <laughs> to my office and uh I get into the captain's chair. We'll talk about chairs to you later cuz that's an interesting topic. Um and yeah, I sign in and uh I don't get my first cup of coffee. God, this is weird because I am actually pretty routined as well. I have my first cup of coffee at 8 a.m every day and it's a ritual because it's french press so i get up start working 8 a.m i take my first break so i've been working just a little over an hour make my coffee and then get back to the grind so do you eat breakfast okay so that's another interesting topic i am a pretty ritualistic 16 8 guy the so hell does that mean I fast for 16 hours and I only eat in an eight hour window every day, which is typically between noon and 8 PM. Wow. So I have my first caloric intake to like anything that's going to trigger the metabolic systems in my liver pretty much noon or later. Wow. That's crazy. I need breakfast every day. Uh, intermittent fasting pretty amazing and it it definitely helps with um, my mental clarity in the mornings for sure so fasting's crazy interesting all right so So our routines our routines couldn't be any different so any more different you take a deferred shower so now we're talking hygiene (laughs) are you you back to front or front to back or both bob (laughs) don't (laughs) so i don't mind so i'm a so already self-proclaimed dirty hippie. I'm also a big believer in skin flora and uh, protecting ourselves with our own. But anyway, so I will, I'm pretty much, uh, so I work out later in the day. I don't get up and work out. I work out after work when I do, you know, but I'll also do push-ups and stuff throughout the day. Pretty much when I push, when I push, push, (laughs) when I push stuff up to get, I'll like plank, do push-ups, squats, that kind of stuff. Um, so I shower later, much later. All right. More of an evening thing. You mentioned chairs. Let's talk about yes. chairs real quick. So you, you got a spinny chair right there. Is that well, a... I have, my chair is actually a Veradesk chair. Oh, so it like comes up and down or something? Well, it's a stool, but it's on a post. And uh-huh. it um, the post is variable. So it's a core strengthening chair. Okay. So it's, and it does go up and down. It's meant to be used with a Vera desk, but it also the cushion on it is really um, uncomfortable. So 
after about an hour of sitting here and grinding away, I got to get up, which I feel is pretty healthy. Veridesk, if you're listening, we still want you as a sponsor, even though you have shitty chairs. Okay. No, I think it's, no, it's, <laughs> it's not, it's not comfortable on purpose. It's supposed to encourage you to be up. So I see. So I, I am presently using at home in the office, a, for lack of a better term, a fast food restaurant chair. It's, Wait, what is that? Oh, you mean like it's got like, the hard plastic molded? Yep. If you were to go to like a Wendy's and steal one of their chairs. Oh, dude, that's awful. That's you. what I'm using. And I had a nice like office chair, but the damn hydraulics kept like, you know, throughout the day, you kind of sink down a little bit. Then you'd have to like, you know, try to adjust it back up. So I'd th throw that one out. And then I had some back problems last year. And now I just put a nice um, lumbar cushion, like third party, on this really commercial looking restaurant chair. And that works great for me. And that's such a weird thing to say. Are you getting up during the day? I mean, like, what's your up down kind of routine? Ah, uh, so more getting up is best, you know, more frequently. So I'll have to take the dogs out, you know, so there's some natural ones in there. Mm. I'll have to use the mm. restroom. Mm. I, I'll just get hungry because I'm, I'm a slob and I love to snack all day. <laughs> so I, I get up and down at least probably an hourly, even though I think best is like every 30 minutes or something. That's great. Yeah. Um, it could be worse, but I, I doing all right there because that but, was actually one of the things that came up on our i mean like we had a really engaging uh community twitter conversation about the work from home thing like people kept jumping in and exercise came up pretty late in the thread but you know that whole getting up and being mobile and there's so much so much to that not just you know for keeping years from being shaved off your life but like the whole mental clarity and you know that kind of thing too what about what about lunch? So lunch is usually the questions like, do I stay in, save money, or do I go to town and get out of the damn house because I've got cabin fever like a mofo and you know I, I want to see another human being, you know, in my day, but in the in the flesh. So where do you come down on lunch? Wow, this is going to be an interesting little conversation as well. So, uh couple factors that play here. One, uh, my children are all older and we typically have one to two fewer cars than people in the family, which I know sounds a little obscene when you talk about, you know, a five person family. We've only ever had up to three vehicles, but my middle son just moved to Texas and he bought one of our cars. So now we have two vehicles and my wife works out of the home. So she takes one and my daughter drives the other to high school. So I'm usually left here every day without a vehicle. So I have two options. Jimmy John's, which is a sandwich shop, freaky fast, freaky good. Uh, delivery or are you walking to it? No, it's delivery. Okay. So I uh, you have the app, but that actually is only when I'm off my ketogenic diet wagon. So typically, when that magic noon to one o'clock bell rings, I will go cook myself up a couple of eggs and half an avocado. And if I'm really adventurous, some bacon. Ooh, you yeah. had me at eggs and bacon. No, no. Yep. <laughs> Don't know about an avocado. But avocado gives me some healthy fat. So that's like my first meal of the day. So I typically have, I mean, not typically, pretty much almost every day I have breakfast for my first meal, which is at noon. All right. So that's lunch. Um, yeah. And then usually dinner, it's pretty, kids get home from school first, uh, then the wife gets home from work, and then, you know, it's now it's time. Work's over, and I I shut down from work essentially every day. So at five or five thirty, I usually say, "Okay, what's my time?" Oh, by the way, I track my hours with a with an app called Harvest. Are you familiar with that? Oh yeah. 
So I do the timer thing. So I may have one or more clients through the day. And when I have to do context switching, step one is to go to Harvest, start a new timer. I do the right. timer thing typically rather than just say, well, I think it was a half an hour because it's real hard for me to actually gauge time when you're really into something. So I really love that the timer feature. And then how, that, how I- Do they have a desktop app for that or is that just through the website? Um, they have mobile, they have a Windows 10 app and a website one, but I would- tell you that the windows 10 one is broken in my humble opinion the website one is your best option and it used to be where if i started a timer on the website and stopped it on my um, phone the website got really confused so (laughs) i usually use the website that's my primary yeah we tried the windows 10 app um our team did and we realized it was broken pretty quickly yes um I like I like the fact that my phone will remind me that hey your timer's still going especially if I'm like out at lunch I'm like oh shit so I gotta stop the timer <laughs> back off like ten minutes or something you know but in general that's uh, it works really well I've used it shoot since like 2013 so that, that app's been around a long time but what I was getting at is at the end of the day um, we're 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 very healthy in terms of our work days. When I put them put in my eight hours, it's it's time to time to, to push stuff till tomorrow. So that's a really good question, though. So since you don't commute, well, but except you do have like a two and a half hour lag time before you work. Uh-huh. See, but you don't you don't feel obligated. Well, because you're not part of a team that doesn't commute, though. Or what's the question, does. Bob? Well, the question is, so you said the eight hour thing. So you cut yep. it off pretty strong at eight hours. Yes. See, if I did that, I'd be done working every day at two o'clock. Well, that not that called flex time? And isn't that? It is called flex time. But so, okay, this is a very interesting topic, though, because I work as part of a larger organization where everyone doesn't have the work from home option. Allegedly. Mm -hmm. So I have many of the people on my team, most of the people on my team have to commute to work. So they put in their eight hours and that's perfectly fine because typically they're going to have anywhere from an hour to two hours, sometimes even more on either side. So that's that without a blink of an eye turns into a 12 hour day for them. So since I enjoy my productivity boost, not having to commute and I don't have to commute, I do feel obligated to put in much more. Like I'm typically, most of my days are nine and a half to 10 hours. Recorded so, time. so we're talking 45 to 50 a week. Yeah. I'm pretty like, I'm pretty standard 48 plus. So the first time I worked from home in 2013 to 2014, the company policy was is if you get in 37 and a half hours, you're good. And that's big company. That's big company policy too, which is pretty interesting. Well, this was a small company. This was 12 of us or whatever. Right. So I guess that's pretty standard labor type stuff. And then where I'm at now, we have no official policy other than get the, you know, get the job done and take care of yourself. You know, um, and I've never been yelled at for, I mean, I put in 40. So I target 40. So just to be clear, it's not like I'm looking for 37 and a half or, or I refuse to work 45 or 50. I, the goal is 40. And right. I, and if you say eight, you're going to hit 40. Yes. And so that's, that's my goal. Eight hours a day is my goal. But some days if I put in 10, which is happens, I will definitely say, you know what? I owe myself two hours later this week. So it's either Tuesday or usually Friday. I go, Hey, you know what? I'm putting in six today because I I got 10 over here and harvest knows that I'm about to hit 40 and you know, it it just keeps track of that. So that's typically what I do. Um, In theory, I do that as well, except I do it much more on a rolling basis. Like if I have like a series of hard weeks where, you know, like I'm putting in a minimum of 10 hours and, you know, maybe like three Fridays down the line, I'll just be like, you know what? Today is going to be a fiver. 
or maybe a four if I can get away with it. But, you know, at the end of the month, I'm still like way, way up on hours. And then so hashtag agency life. I don't know how, if it's different where you're at, but work comes in. It's feast or famine, right? So it's either all of the stars align and you just somehow need to clone yourself or there is can't get blood from a turnip as far as work. <laughs> it's just like, ah, it's just weak. It's just uh, we're waiting for everyone to make a decision. But, you know, my my work week is is ticking right now. And if you make a decision Friday and today's Tuesday between now and then I need to be creative on what I need to do. So I know this is kind of outside of like working from home, but what I've been doing recently is learning React because I look at the work, the workload in Jira or pick your tool. We're using Jira right now. God bless it. Um, but <laughs> um Right now, we kind of have segregation of duties. We have a front end, we have a back end. And what we've seen lately is we have an asymmetric amount of work, where if you look at the project and go, well, we need a task and it needs to do something on the back end and it needs to do something on the front end. Naively, you could go, well, that's some 50% of the work for Kevin, 50% of the work for the front end person. Right. What's happening in practice, and this is fairly predictable, so I'm not not at all surprised, is it's more of a 60%, 30%, or 66, 33% split, where it's two-thirds effort for that same task to manifest it on the front end as the back end's just an API, just like throw it in the database, (laughs) you know, call it it a good. That's So, so interesting, too, because I feel like, in recent time that's been shifting like that 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 offset didn't really swing that way that often in the past and now it's starting to because we're building systems that are much easily replicatable on the back end uh much more modular but the front end is always something a little bit tweaked out from what it used to be because the front end is super subjective because it's super visual, super of exposed. Where the back end, as long as it functions, it, it requires zero form. Where the right. front end is both form and function. It needs to both look good and do the thing. Right. I have a call where you can just pass a variable and get your pass parameter and get X, Y, Z, or just X, or you can get A through Z if you want. That's already written. Now you have to deal with that on the front end, depending on the view you're working with. Right. And on the back end, it's, well, once we got the security basics in place, we've got the controller basics in place, then it's just rinse and repeat over and over and over where when we get into a sprint planning on the front end, it's, well, we might just dream up of a whole bunch of new shit today. Awesome stuff. Awesome functionality. The back end is just going to do the same old, same old. But now we need two new screens, six new buttons. How does it, how does everything arrange here? Um, what's the client side validation what's the server side you know there's it just it is spirals so what i was getting at so working from home sometimes i've got time on my hands and um what i just decided to do rather than just sit and wait for the eventual task for me i'm helping out on the system that i totally knew nothing about until last week which is re uh, it's a react stack and um, I'm going head head first into it, and I did my first major feature um, completion today with the help of of the the main front end person Taylor. So thank you, Taylor. And um, it felt really good. And I was talking to um, Matt Brailsford on Twitter, and he's he's checking out View, and he he said he's having this giddy school, you know, boy fanboy, you know, vibe. Because it's just like this whole new like part of the universe of programming that he's learning. I'm like, ah, I'm kind of going through that too, where I don't even know half the stuff existed or, or I may have heard of it. And then, oh, now I, so, oh, shoot, I follow this guy on Twitter and he's the guy who wrote this thing that I just used. I totally didn't make that connection until just now. So I'm kind of oh, wow. going through one of those things. So, yeah, so you're learning that right now. Right now. Yep. I'm reading a book and I'm doing hands on and we're shipping stuff that I, <laughs> I'm literally, for me, it's bleeding edge for Taylor. It's just like, you know, right. A Tuesday, but anyway, uh, that that's, um, so 
I guess where I was ultimately going with that is, is uh, working from home takes a lot of discipline because it would be so easy just to say, oh, well, I don't have anything to do and nobody's around. Let me just go play some video games or let me just do laundry all day. And, and don't get me wrong, I, I make sure I have that laundry running and I make sure, you know, if an errand comes up, I plan my day around that. The honey-do list will get done, but I also deliver and that's what's so great about working from home, right? Um, Because when you're in office, there's zero chance you can start that load of laundry. There's zero chance that you can probably um, meet the delivery person, the UPS guy, you know, at at three o'clock in the afternoon because you're at work. And, you know, it's a lot of weird benefits like that. Yeah, I was going to ask you when you mentioned it earlier, like um, when the kids come home. So my kids are older, so that's not nearly as an event as it used to be. But with my kids all being just a couple of years apart, there was a long time where, oh, we didn't even talk about summer yet. So that's interesting. Um, <laughs> where, you know, school is over. Mom is at work. So dad's the only guy around and you got a house full of kids after school. Um, that's part of the reason why I started working earlier, like then everyone else because I could have that quiet time once everybody was away to school or Caroline could help get them off to school. And then, uh, but yeah, so what was that? What's that like when they come home? Do you, is there a dip in productivity or, or do they know the drill? I have a fourth grader. Well, I have a, a senior in high school who lives elsewhere presently. I have a fourth grader who will come home through the door during that time, a first grader and a preschooler. and we, I, well, at least I firmly believe that the older children need to lead the younger children. And every one of them has varying degrees of chores that they, that they're responsible for. So Jackson needs to take the dogs out as soon as he gets home, he knows before he can play any video games. So it's, it's a reward system, do your chores and you can do exactly what it is. I know you want to do, which is play freaking Fortnite, (laughs) you know? So, (laughs) um, Josie will love to come home. Look, I got a a smiley face on my, on my paper. And I'll be like, great. I'm in a meeting. And she knows, okay. All right. I'll be back. You know? Um, So things like that. And my youngest, my preschooler, I think she's just by osmosis. She's been trained from just how our family culture is is oh dad's in a meeting you know uh don't don't bother him i can wait till he's he's done so see they're kids, very well trained my kids never ever ever got it they, <laughs> like when they came home it must be like they must have thought well it must be time for dad to be done with work so i would engage you know and maybe that's probably where i set the precedent wrong but so yeah i would always take a dip when they would come home, my productivity would definitely take a little gap. And even with my daughter, who's a senior in high school, when she comes home, I'll take a break, chat with her. And, you know, she'll usually suck me into something that's going Uh, on. Funny you mention that. I ask my kids one question when they, usually around dinner time after I'm done working. And one question I, I make a point to ask and I'll ask each individual one, one at a time right next to each other. And it's the simple phrase is how was your day? <laughs> and not open-ended. That's good. Or it is open-ended. That's good. That's what I meant. Right. And it's, it's opportunity for each one of them to let me know if they were bullied. Let me know if they had a good day, got a great grade. Let me know if they got a bad grade. Let me know if, if, hey, dad, remember piano is in an hour and I, you got to take me. I'm like, oh, shit. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, but I ask my kids that question every single day. And, and that's probably the most effective thing I can do. Because when I get home at three in the afternoon, they know that, OK, dad's in the meeting um, or dad's working. Because a lot of times I will have to look at them and go, guys, keep it down. I'm working. You know, kind right. of give them the dad voice, you know. <laughs> well, I have meeting face, so. <laughs> yep. And then I usually, it, you know, my first grader will say, I want to show you the good paper I got. I'll look at her and say, we'll talk at dinner time. You know, she knows I'll ask her, how was your day? You know, and that's her time to kind of decompress or or be excited or whatever. And so they're they're pretty well trained. 
now they're not perfect. Trust me. There's days I'm like, gosh, dang it. Guys be quiet. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm in the meeting, you know, hit mute on hangouts, you know, yell at him, unmute. Hi guys. Uh, and then you just pick up where you left off. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to lie. That happens every now and then. <laughs> yeah. Video and mute is a little dicier than phone and mute though. That's well, the thing that you guys are video. Yeah, I mean, if my video comes off, you know for sure I'm probably turned to my head and, <laughs> and and I'm I'm yelling at somebody to keep their voice down or or take the dogs outside because I got a yipping dog or something. So, so what is it like in the summertime? Because I mean, your kids are still young for the most part. Well, we live rural, and right now we're living on a farm, and so the kids like to be outside and you know uh my 10 year old farms with with grandpa and uncle and like gets in the combine and you know this time of year and he's he's out actually he's out right now uh they're picking corn and all that right now um my younger daughters um spend a lot of time with grandma so right now we're we're living uh as a what do you call a family where you got you know, your family plus the grandparents. Kind of I don't know if there's a, I'm sure there is a term. Not for nuclear that. family, but it's like. But it feels like that might be the one. It, it's, it's like, you know, it's very, it feels like some people would probably be like, oh man, you live with, with, uh, uh, you know, your in-laws or whatnot, but it's really not a big deal. In fact, it's very advantageous, you know, when, when, hey kids, go bother grandma and dad's in the meeting here. You know? And it beats the hell out of being homeless. <laughs> oh, well that too. Yeah. So, uh, or speak- living in a hotel. Yes. Yeah, so no complaints whatsoever. Um, in fact, my, uh, my mother-in-law is a great, um, I don't want to call her babysitter, but it takes a village to raise families, yes. you know, yes, and she's does. definitely a, big contributor so there we go so it honestly it's never been a problem just because this is for the, for the formative years of most of the kids i've always worked from home so this is normal this is what they expect this isn't like weird and the only bad thing here is is as my kids grow up they'll think they'll get to work from home <laughs> yeah i worry about that a little bit too but i was always really good because they would always ask the questions like you know dad, why do you, why do you work from home? And I'm like, well, I get to work from home and here's why I get to work from home. And so I'd kind of outline the, you know, the things, the attributes about me that, you know, prove, have proven to my employers that I can work from home. And then I also kind of model like that if you want to be the kind of worker that does work from home, this is what you have to be able to manage and deal with. And also like, you know, strive for that. You know, you might not necessarily work from home, but strive to have those qualities that an employer would give you that opportunity if you wanted it. So, Bob, I know you and I both get the call every now and then that says, hey, I need you to be in Big City X on Friday for that FaceTime. Right? For one meeting, for, for a two-hour meeting. I'd like you to fly. I'd like you to travel for 16 hours for a two-hour meeting. Yes. <laughs> yes, I, so- I know that drill well. So I'm pretty sure I have it better than you because I don't have to go to Denver, which is where the bosses are. Uh, I don't know. I haven't been there since probably 2016. <laughs> and I'll I'll be going here soon again. Um, but uh, I think you travel way more than I do, right? A, a little bit more. Um, the crazy thing is I've been so busy with productivity stuff that there hasn't been very much opportunity for me to go. Um, anything that I do travel right now, it is client-based. And that pretty much could be anywhere. And I have flown literally, you know, many hours of the day, traveled many hours of the day for a day trip. You know, it, it's, it's always... not road warrior life, though, because I only do it like once every couple of months. It's, I'm always confused on what to do with the hours. Like if you travel... 10 so hours. Have, right. But no, we have is that work hours? Is that not work hours? Well, we have a corporate, we have a category for that. It's actually a travel category. So depending on the client that can, or that may or may not be billed. Billable versus not billable. Get that. But what about 
Bob hours. So if Bob's trying to shoot for 40 hours a week and he just. Oh, no, that does count. For, that okay. does count to my total. All right. That's what I'm asking because uh, it, it's, it's never really been defined in my past. So I. Well, it works that way for me because bottom line is, is when I'm doing that, that's actually taking away from my productivity time. Calls are the same thing for me. Like I'm in that weird zone where there are some days out of my 10 hour day, I have six hours, seven hours of calls. And that's a, that's a rough one. Speaking of rough, I've had to lead a team before remotely. And that's, that's fairly tough. What, what do you think? I feel like I've drawn enough from my own experiences. Like, cause my team is a hundred percent, like I manage a team and they're a hundred percent remote to me. And, um, I, you know, touch points are giant. So I stay in contact with them as much as I can and still be productive myself. Um, the ones the the team members that I know are more independent, I will let them drift. Um, and I'll just touch base with them maybe once a day or maybe once every couple days. But I, I, I still, like, I don't micromanage at all, obviously, because I'm not touching base with them all the time. But I've really not noticed it being difficult because I've never managed anyone locally, I guess. Bottom line. Gotcha. Why, is um, it, why do you find it so challenging? Well... I don't know. Um, sometimes I feel like because I was in the military, leading people for me is a face to face, you know, natural thing. So I've, I've done the remote thing for a while. So it's, it's just tough because when, when you, because I, I was leading a remote team, um, a lot of times if you're spread across time zones, which I'm sure you can uh, relate. relate with. <laughs> You know, like, so the mountain time zone is an interesting one because when I'm going to lunch, it's only 10 o'clock in the morning there. So that's usually mid morning. That's like right prime time. They want to get a hold of people, schedule a meeting and things like that. Um, and then when I get back from lunch um, and I don't take that long and then I get some work in, it's about time for them to go to lunch. So this is like this weird four hour window of where it's difficult to herd the cats um, depending on the time zone. Yep. And so it's it, really, it's a, it's a challenge of geography and time zone and less about people, but compound that with, okay, person in Eastern time zones, kids uh, need picked up or um, from school, or there's a parent teacher conference in the mountain times, you know, it's just, just, where they hit on the calendar in one day is the challenge. So really, I guess it's less about remote management as more as it is geographic management. Yeah, we have a, we try to have a weekly scheduled team check-in. So we're not all working on the same project. So we don't have like a, you know, a daily stand up or that kind of thing. So um, we have a weekly check-in time and that's really for, for me as their manager, it's all about the team building, the camaraderie, you know, like I will, we'll do cycles where we just finished one where it was kind of like MTV cribs. It was remote worker cribs. And so each person on the team took a, took their, the call slot and showed their workspace, you know, video. And we talked about how similar to our conversation today, how do they manage their workspace, their work time, et cetera. And then we did a, a Pachaka Cha series earlier in the spring where everyone did a 20 slide 20 seconds per slide presentation about topic of their choice hopefully work related but it just had to be loosely tangential to work so that was actually really good and so that gave everyone on the team like learning experiences to see how everyone's workspace was but also to see what their their presentation topics were so as a as a big picture management for remote workers, that's what I try to focus on. The day-to-day -day stuff is more individual check-ins and, you know, sometimes my phone rings much more than I want it to, but I will always take the time to, you know, touch base and help them out. So one of the tougher things for me to articulate 
when leading a team or even just uh, sharing an idea is whiteboarding because it's hard to whiteboard remotely as opposed to in person. Now you can do the screen share, but I'm just talking the old fashioned draw a really crappy diagram. Apparently with Zoom that we use, there is a whiteboard aspect, but I've never tried it. Okay, we'll, we'll have to uh, send the interns to uh, research that. Or maybe uh, we do an episode simply or a segment about whiteboarding on Zoom. <laughs> I don't know if that translates well to a non-visual uh, medium, but... All right, fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> but I, I'll, I'll go with your lead there. Uh, speaking of tools, so I know you don't and I... Don't call use, me a tool again. <laughs> you and I use Zoom. Uh, we use Hangouts a lot where where I work and we use Slack, uh, anything outside those three that any sort of collaboration tools that you're just like, gosh, this is awesome. Uh, it's good we, enough. Uh, for the company that I currently work for, we're a big uh, Skype house. So oh, our I team, <laughs> we don't mind it. We were, our, our team was actually one of the pilot teams for using Skype for business. And uh, we, we use it to the nines. We use Slack to the nines too. We're as far as a, a group goes in a, a large company organization. We're pretty, we're pretty tightly knit for being, you know, disparate like throughout the country. So we definitely use our communication tools pretty, pretty regularly. So, and and I don't want you to have to disclose what you do or don't use, but I'm just throwing some out for myself. So Google Docs, that's that's one we definitely <laughs> like to we, use. We are not allowed to use any outside services like that. So, you know, it's funny you mentioned that. We have a that. corporate system. Funny you mentioned that. I'm trying to, and I sent a tweet out today, I'm trying to de-Google my life. Like, I, I'm, I'm just looking at all the hooks that each company has in on me. Google has some deep ones. You know, you got YouTube, you got your Gmails, you got your uh, Google Docs, you've got Google Analytics. There's just so many, like if if uh, Google turns out to be like they sacrifice kittens on the weekend and I just want to walk away from them, it would be very hard to do right now. Heck agree? yeah. Heck yeah. But the problem is, is there's no, there's no enterprise level companies that are saying that we're the Google or the Dropbox or the fill in the blank for enterprise companies. They're, they're just not because well, you know what? They're just not as good. And if they are, guess what happens? Google buys them. <laughs> True. <laughs> Fair which, enough. <laughs> which um, to bring it around to the beginning of the episode with the monopoly board, the, you know, that, that was part of my motivation too. I'm just like ah, Silicon Valley, they just buy their competition. Oh shit. I didn't even realize the whole monopoly tie-in. Oh, you're so smart. <laughs> I don't know about that, but um, you know, it would be I would great. actually be interested in owning a copy of that, like a print of that when it's yeah, done. I, that well, I got it on an office wall. I got to figure out how the heck to print something that size, you know, I'm, I'm sure I could take it somewhere and I'm sure it would cost $40. <laughs> I'm sure it would be um, one off copies, but yeah. But I'm thinking, you know, like something that's two feet by three feet or three feet square framed. So what if it's 250 bucks? It looks yeah. good. That's true. But I also don't know what, what the resolution breakdown might be when you get. Well, that that's big. what I was going to ask is like, so it, does that app do everything at 72 GPI or is it? Oh, now higher? you're asking. I, I'm sure I'm, I'm certain I don't know there. <laughs> so I know the native resolution is like 2,400 by like 1,700. It's a rectangle aspect ratio. Right. But that doesn't mean that's the resolution of the illustration. Though. Fair enough. Let's, I'll punt back to, I have no idea. <laughs> well, that, I, I'd be interested to find that out. And I would actually be interested in owning a print of that one. Actually, well, the Bowser one's pretty awesome too. But. What, I'm, what I'm planning to do, uh, I plan to make a, a jigsaw puzzle. So I'm going to take a, like a mosaic of all these different cartoons I draw and do a jigsaw puzzle, like a, you know, 500 or a thousand piece. Uh, I was thinking about doing like a, a t-shirt, just one offs, not, not to make any money on or anything. Yeah, but some of them are actually things. frameable though. Some of them are actually really good. <laughs> some of them? What are you trying to say, Bob? <laughs> well, you can't hit a home run every time. Lies, lies. 
But you're batting definitely over 500. So yeah, I'll, t- I'll take that. So uh, yeah, and, and plus the, the Monopoly board I'm drawing is actually not 100% complete. It actually is only two and a half sides. Well, the right. Board. The teaser images look great, though. Well, thank you. What's that Instagram account where people can find those teaser uh, images? Nerd underscore for or art for you. So nerd underscore f- art underscore for you man that was tough sorry <laughs> wow did anybody get that it's, no what is it one more time um it's go to my twitter account and click on my profile and you'll get there <laughs> <laughs> all right man did we solve anything today of course not what did we what did we actually cover just working from home and all kinds of random stuff and, and random rants and whatnot it's good stuff it was a great episode yes we just have one more order of business, I believe, and that is... Uh, Let's just bring that light. 